Hello everyone, Ian here again on a beautiful sunny day, a perfect day to mess around with something I've been after for ages. And then to messing around with fiddly little filters on the Mavic 2 Pro, I finally have a variable ND filter. So I can leave it fitted all the time, no matter what you're filming, and no matter what the weather's doing. And that's what I'm playing with today. Hello everyone, I'm Ian and I play with drones. And I have dogs as well. Um, if you like what I share, then hit the button and get notified. So as I said, today I'm playing with Freewell's new variable ND filter kit. Uh, thanks to Harry for sending it through to me. I have to say, over the whole of the summer, I've been pretty lazy and I've just left the ND16 on uh, all summer, hoping that it suited most situations. Why? Because it is so fiddly, changing the filters on the Mavic 2 Pro. It's not like the magnetic housings you have on the uh, Osmo Pocket. With the Mavic 2 Pro, you have to turn the uh, drone upside down, grab the gimbal and do your best not to do any damage. So to be honest, I rarely change filters unless I really have to. So I was pretty happy to get this pack. It's two pack and unlike all the other ND filters that I have uh, looked at, these are variable. So you literally dial up the optical density depending on uh, how bright the day is. Now I don't want to go through all the techie reasons as to why you need an ND filter. I've done that before. And to be honest, there are some who say you don't even need one on the Mavic 2 Pro as it's got a variable aperture. Well, I disagree and here's why. In a nutshell, the typical shutter speed on a sunny day can easily hit uh, one, one thousandth or even uh, two thousandths of a second. And that results in individual frames that are so sharp that the end video can look overproduced or even CGI-like. Now you can adjust the Mavic's uh, aperture from a fairly large f2.8 right down to f11, massively reducing its size and the light getting in, allowing a slower shutter speed. But once you start going above eight, the picture can get a bit soft and poorer quality. And most agree that an aperture of 4.5 is a perfect aperture for the Mavic 2 Pro. So even keeping the ISO down to 100 to avoid the grainy pics, you're still going to struggle with a very high shutter speed. So with the Mavic 2 Pro, the perfect setup you're aiming for is an aperture of uh, around f4.5, uh, ISO of 100, and a shutter speed of around 150th to 160th of a second. And that is simply why I leave the ND filter on. Like my son is, it knocks the light right down and stops pushing the shutter speeds. But there's a big difference obviously between a cloudy evening and midday sun. That's why I like the idea of variable ND. So that's all the theory, let's have a proper look at them. As I said, the filters come in a pack of two, marked two to five and six to nine. These figures actually refer to the f-stops. Each stop setting refers to a halving of the amount of light that gets through the lens. So one stop equals half the amount of light. Two stops is half again, which is a quarter of the amount of light, which would equate to an ND4. The third stop is going to be half as much again, which is going to take the quarter down to an eighth, which is why you get an ND8 and so on. So I normally use an ND16 in the UK sunshine, which equals to a stop of around four on the dial. Slightly misleadingly, the packet actually indicates uh, ND2 to 5 and ND6 to 9. As I said, that's actually referring to the uh, f-stops, not the actual ND markings. So the lighter disc mark 2 to 5 is going to be the equivalent of ND4 right up to an ND32. And the darker disc, which is marked 6 to 9, is going to be the equivalent of an ND64 right up to an ND500. So for me, certainly the lighter filter is the one I can leave on all the time. ND4 right up to ND32. That's going to suit almost all my day-to-day -day, uh, filming needs. So up flying, you can see the difference that it actually makes. With no filter, I've got the aperture set to 4.5 and the auto shutter speed uh, sits on around 1,000th of a second. Fitting the filter and dialing it up to 5, which is the equivalent of an ND32, um, that's normally a bit too dark for British sunny days. And sure enough, the shutter speed goes right down to 1 30th of a second before it looks, like, looks right, which is just a little bit too slow. So for me, dialing it between 3 and 4, which is an ND8 to 16, gives me that shutter speed of 1 50th to 1 60th of a second, which is just right. 
Now I should point out another common complaint with some variable filters, more on uh, DSLR cameras, is that uh, if you actually ramp them up too much uh, uh, to try and get too dark, you can actually end up with the dreaded X of interference. There's a giant X pattern that comes along and uh, starts ruining the pictures. Very pleased to say no sign of that whatsoever on these filters. Here you can see on the five and also the nine settings, no sign at all of that uh, X interfering. So that's what I wanted to say today, super quick summary of what I think is a fantastically useful little bit of kit. Uh, like I said, big thanks to Harry to sending it through. Uh, you know me, if they were no good, I would say so. But to me, these are a fantastic little bit of kit and uh, it's going to be left on the uh, Mavic 2 Pro for the rest of the summer. Um, also very pleased, they're only £49 or $49, uh, usual links below and you can just get them off Amazon. So anyway, until next time, have fun, happy flying. Thank you.